Hey guys, it's been a while since I've done another video, but I'm excited because I just wanted to share real quick about what God's been um, putting on my heart about the wealth transfer. I'll try to make this video short and sweet and to the point. Um, I know that Jesus, um, he said, uh, blessed is the one who is not offended by me. So if this uh, video comes across offensive, um, then maybe that's a good thing. Uh, the truth <laughs> can be offensive. Um, I know the Psalms say that um, wounds from a friend are faithful, but the enemy multiplies kisses. Something like that. I'm very paraphrasing. I'm not. This isn't a Bible study. Um, well, you can look up those um, if you want. Um, also, don't worry about um, me mentioning to subscribe and like the video. Um, you're a grown adult. Pretty sure you can make your own decisions. You don't need someone to tell you what video you need to subscribe to. You made it this far in life, right? You're on this video. Pretty sure you have a, half a brain, I'd hope, to be able to decide that. I don't know. For me, it's annoying when I hear that. Anyways, God bless, God bless those people. God bless them, right? So you want to know how to make the big bucks. You want money, right? For God's kingdom in the name of God's kingdom. You want uh, monetary wealth or worldly wealth? Well, this video probably isn't for you. So go ahead and just exit out, pause. Just go ahead and go. Did they leave yet? Okay, anybody else? All right, good, I think they left. So now, we're going to get to the true wealth of uh, God's wealth transfer. Everyone seems to be talking about the money side of things, the monetary, the worldly things that come and go. They're here one day, then they're thrown into the fire the next day. Um, while that's great, and God's de definitely going to be providing that, and if that's what you want, then I believe that he'll do that. That's You have to remember, we can't forget that, that that's just one of many uh, pieces of the wealth transfer. The Bible speaks about this. The latter rain. Um, I had a friend who helped me. Thank you. Um, I haven't talked to him in a while, but he showed me this. Um, the 12 tribes, all right, as a side note, are not a stone. The, the 12 tribes um, are scattered across the earth. It's not a false... Uh, stone builders made nation that's all over satan's tv if you don't uh, like that or agree with that go ask jesus it definitely won't hurt for you to turn off your tvs um i know julie wedby released a word that said if uh, people are still listening and watching the news then there's very little that jesus can do to um, be reaching his people it's very hard there's only so much that we can uh, that we're able to take in, and we don't want to drown out um, God's voice or be uh, drinking from many, many different sources. Let's try to keep it simple and not uh, fluster ourselves. So back to what I was saying: the twelve tribes, every uh, nation, um, tongue, uh, skin color, you name it, all are God's children. There's not one more special than the other. Um, the 12 tribes range across the whole, how do you say it, landscape or scope of uh, mankind. And uh, that being said, the latter reigns about regathering his people, his elect. It's about pouring out the, his blessing storehouses, um, health, hello, um, who cares if you have millions and billions of dollars if someone's sick and unable to enjoy their life and do the simple things it won't matter then so obviously there's more to the wealth transfer i remember god told me uh yes uh the wealth is just one of many ways that i will bless my people so uh, wealth uh health um and there's so many other channels that mention this uh miraculous weight loss restored vision um, maybe people look younger. They appear you know, um, better. There's going to be a lot of uh, signs uh, accompany, accompanying this that God will get the glory and that we're truly in the end days. So as you know, this video too is for a certain person. This isn't about arguing if the, if 
if the wealth transfer is going to happen or not, or if it's true or not. This is just to say this video's purpose, God help me, is to um, show God's wealth and who it's for and how to use it. So have you ever, if you're still here, have you ever asked Jesus, have you ever asked Father who the wealth transfer is for? So first of all, we should appreciate the giver, not the gift more, right? Everything has their proper place, right? Amen. God is first. God is God, right? Everything else is everything else. So do you know who is giving the wealth transfer? You do good. Now, here's the second thing I think a lot of people miss. Uh, who, <laughs> who is the wealth transfer for? Ask Jesus. Who is it for? What is the whole reason for this, do you think? Yes, it's for you. Yes, it's for me. Okay, but beyond that, who is it for? Yes, it's to help others, right? For Jesus' harvest. Why? Because we're in the end times. When people speak of generational wealth, I just chuckle and laugh. You're not listening to the Holy Spirit. You're listening to a counterfeit spirit. We're in the end times. You don't think so? Go ask Jesus. Talk to him. God won't be mocked. He's not going to give uh, his wealth back into the false state, the false uh, 501c3 um, that are controlled and monitored and muzzled. And they don't really use it for God's kingdom. They spend it on their own flesh, their own desires. They think, you know, all these things. Yeah, that's nice, but God is in that. He's in reclaiming what is lost and broken before time runs out. And so, yeah, you know, I in the past I got upset, but I think God just told me basically, hey, leave those people alone. You know, like if they want to spend more um, in this life instead of, you know, investing for the next life, meaning being more selfish and having more possessions on this earth instead of helping others, that is just going to affect their reward in the next life. Don't worry about it. You could worry about yourself, Jonathan, right? So, you know, if that's what if that's what people want, they want to just go get things and do things, let them let him. God will give them what he wants. And I'm not going to, you know, we shouldn't try to convince others. People are set on what they're going to do. There's no, there's no need to argue. But I know for a fact that most of this, if not all, which I hope, is going to go to the people that truly need it, that truly need help. So it's just funny. People think, oh, generational wealth. No, Bible says you're in the last generation. Um, don't believe me? Ask Jesus. So, and uh, let's see, what else is there? Oh, if you think it's going to go back into the fallen church system. Nope, that's already been, that's a thing of the past. All these churches are actually going to shut down soon, indefinitely. And the true church of Jesus will rise up. Amen. Don't believe me? Watch it happen. So, another way to, I've heard God compare this to, is that anything um, that we spend in this life that isn't really helping others... It's going to be burned up. Before judgment, there's a fire. All of our works will be exposed before God in heaven. Everything, and the angels too. Everything will be burned by the fire. The hay, the stubble, anything uh, that's just perishable, that didn't serve or help or love, anything will be burned away. And that's our reward, our judgment for eternity. Not for a hundred years to enjoy things, let's say 10,000, 100,000. No, eternal rewards. So why would I, if we only have, who, who knows how long? Let's say you have 50 years left, 20 years, 10 years. Jesus can come tomorrow. Would I want to spend that on something fleeting or everlasting? So in heaven, there's eternal rewards, eternal interest. Let that sink in. If things and wanting things are this important to people, it's okay to have nice things. If people want things this badly and this world goes crazy about new things new cars new phones homes you name it how much more enjoyable will, will they be in eternity so god you know he wants to give us these things but we must not be so nearsighted as to lose focus to why we're here who we're going to help what this is all about so basically you, you've you've gone some of you have gone through the math you've you've seen the gains um that are possible with investing and they can be massive multipliers right think of investing into god and helping others in the same way 
you invest here with this wealth transfer, you're going to have dividends and eternal interest and rewards that you cannot even imagine. What are these things? I don't know. I'd like to know, right? Um, so, you know, if worldly things can be this amazing, imagine the heavenly things. You do realize that some of the gifts, you know, that some people are going to have will be able to, will include time traveling, um, will be able to go to heaven, back and forth, to and from heaven in this life, while some may be just, okay, you're a steward of the worldly gifts, the worldly rewards. Sure, there's going to be heavenly rewards for people. So remain humble and don't think that wealth is the end all. People are going to be very blessed. All right, you might laugh and be like, oh, that's ridiculous. Oh, time travel. Oh, people are going to go to and from heaven. Um, remember in Avengers, um, Steve Rogers, I'm not saying anyone to watch that movie. Remember how he was able to go back in time and live a lifetime with his loved one that he um, lost? Where do you think these movies find their inspiration and truth? Or the movie 300, for example. All right. Again, not saying to go watch that, but that is actually from the Bible. I think it was Gideon and his army. He took the most um, toughest, strongest 300 soldiers and they dominated everyone and everything in their path. A lot of these ideas and movies, there's no truth in this world. What they do is they steal truth. They take it. So yes, people will be able to do all of that. They'll have heavenly rewards and blessings beyond anything you can imagine. So don't, let's not be so nearsighted to think wealth is the end all uh, to, to all of that. It's going to be primarily for helping people, others. So you might say, okay, I already know all that. It's going to be for helping others. Remember, we can't really give God anything that's not already his. What, what can we give God? Everything already belongs to him. We belong to him. We didn't make ourselves. The only thing we can give back to God is our time. The time left we have here. What are we going to do with it? So anyways, back to what I was saying. Ask Jesus who the wealth transfer is for and he'll show you. I know that um, there's been people talking about safe havens. There you go. That's better. Um, there's been people talking about uh, the different harvest. There you go again. There's been people that have been showing what God has revealed to them uh, about the wheat harvest or the left behind or properties. Um, you name it. Businesses. Um, however God leads and guides you. That's great. Those are a lot better. So something that came to mind too is um, I had a dream. I don't even know what it was, but we were in the dream. It was a, uh, there was like volcanoes, meteors. I don't know what it was, but everything was just chaotic. And we needed, we needed, um, there was this uh, stadium. There was this rally, this get together of just Christians remaining on earth. People wanted to do an altar call. So we needed that. And it was just chaos. It was just, it felt like the end of the world. The sky was turning red. There's volcanoes. Um, just accidents everywhere, but we still somehow went into the store, bought everything we needed for a stadium full of people to reach them, speakers, microphones, everything like that. And we had these buses too. So we just unloaded the buses and in the stadium, we were just calling people to come in. So while people, there's chaos all around in this world, they came into the stadium. It was very peaceful. And we told them about Jesus and then we just knew time to go time to go we dropped everything we left and lava and fire just ate everything in the stadium we all left safely in the buses we looked behind us it was just all gone and i think that's symbolic for bringing in um, jesus's reward remember this is all about jesus he died on the cross for his harvest his reward which he's still waiting for uh it's not fully happened yet so just finishing this, I'm trying to think if God wants me to bring up anything else. Um, so um, I'd say that God, Jesus says, it's okay to have, it's okay to have nice things. It's okay to want things, but many will be tempted, unfortunately, and there's not a lot ready, I think. That's what he's saying. 
So you have to trust God no matter what happens. If you get a lot or a little, um, and don't, yeah, just, you have to trust God no matter what you think you should have gotten or what you get, you need to, you need to keep him first. You, you need to know that he loves you and, uh, you know, it seems like, yeah, he, he, he wants to give this, but what if it's to someone's own destruction or ruin? Will, would he still do that? I don't know. That's up to him. That's not really any of my business. I'd say that you know who you are. Um, if any of this is offensive or is it was a shock, then good, good. Um, that's the goal of this. True wealth versus fleeting wealth. Um, and who it's for, who it's from. God is not going to be mocked. He's not going to be made a fool of. You know who you are. You know what you're going to do with it. That's fine. That's good. But let's just remember who it's for. Who it's for. Amen. All right. Thank you, Jesus. We've been waiting long enough. God knows. So um, part of me, part of me <laughs> has been upset. God forgive me. God help me. Let's be a good influence um to our brothers and sisters you know i sometimes i wonder i'm like is god really talking about all of this i with this person could he be well i guess only god knows and maybe after some prayer but i notice that he tends not to um you know he tends not to really uh i don't think jesus watches tv i don't think he cares about politics i don't think god's a politically correct god i think uh, he's for his kingdom, amen, and he prays for his kingdom to come to earth. He doesn't take sides. He is the side, amen. And one of uh, couple of random <clears throat> thoughts before I close. So people look at it as if, oh, how much of uh, XRP do I need? How much of uh, this do I need to be safe or have enough? But to be honest, no amount will prepare you for what's ahead only trusting in Jesus, being close to God, opening your heart. Doesn't matter if someone has a bunker and they're a billionaire and they're going to hide away somewhere. <laughs> it's not going to be enough. And people who want to stockpile all their things, they want to stockpile all their things and not share or help others. Um, well, what good are bags of gold for a piece of bread? You see, God wants us to use, implement, and invest right away as soon as he's leading. doesn't want stingy people that are going to hold money for, oh, for the guise of, oh, generational wealth or this and the other. It would be much wiser, for example, to invest into the properties and farms in the future than to be stockpiling things that you know in some cases it won't matter god wants to give you even more than just this but you have to be i don't know let's not be so nearsighted on just this you get it be open to everything he has for you this life's a test we're here today we're gone tomorrow for the and then you know he decides who gets the true blessings the big blessings and it's, you know, and if, yeah, so hopefully that encourages someone. Hopefully that can just open your eyes a little bit. Um, <laughs> a lot of people that say they're Christians or, you know, this or that, they're going to be very surprised and maybe upset that they don't get anything. God's not going to be mocked. He knows, he knows who you are. And, you, you know, he's in some cases, it, it might be for that person's own good. So let's just keep believing despite uh, despite no matter despite what happens.